A short but interesting walk is the cliff walk to Marwick Head and the Kitchener Monument. The route starts from the car park on Marwick Bay. The bay and cliffs are on an RSPB reserve. At low tide, the bay forms a shallow lagoon called the Choin. Choin is Gaelic for dog or dogs. The Choin is an excellent bird spotting site. It's worth stopping for a few minutes before you start the walk to watch the birds feeding at the water's edge. From the car park, if you look north, you may just get a glimpse of the Kitchener Memorial at the top of the hill. The start of the walk runs along a narrow path through tall cow parsley behind a large wall built to protect the fields from the salt spray blowing in from the Atlantic. The route then follows the cliff edge north and upwards. Unless you're of a certain age, the name Lord Kitchener may mean very little. At best, you might recall the First World War recruiting poster featuring Kitchener and the slogan, Your Country Needs You. In Britain, Kitchener was a national hero, but in other countries, it's fair to say he was much hated. Kitchener's exploits as military hero included a failed attempt to rescue General Gordon from the siege of Khartoum, and later the subsequent defeat and merciless annihilation of the Sudanese forces at the Battle of Omdurman, an act of revenge for the death of Gordon. During the Second Boer War in 1899, Kitchener instigated the destruction of Boer farms, herding the women and children into large compounds, which became known as concentration camps. Closer to home, in 1916, he was responsible for savagely putting down the Easter Rebellion in Ireland. It's therefore no wonder he didn't have his enemies to seek out with Britain. So what was his connection to this remote part of Britain? In reality, not much, apart from having died here at Marwick Head. The known facts are these. In June 1916, during the First World War, Kitchener, the then Secretary of State for War, was instructed to sail to Russia for talks with Britain's Russian allies. Kitchener travelled to Orkney and joined HMS Hampshire in Scapa Flow. The cruiser would normally have sailed the obvious route east from Scapa Flow but a violent northeasterly gale was blowing. So instead, the Hampshire was instructed to head west and then north into the Pentland Firth, thereby seeking shelter in the lee of the high cliffs of mainland Orkney. As luck would have it, when the Hampshire and its two escorting destroyers reached open sea, the storm changed direction to come in from the northwest. The protection from the cliffs was lost. The Hampshire ploughed on directly into the face of the storm, leaving the slower destroyers behind. On reaching Marwick Head, there was an enormous explosion at the Hampshire's bow. Observers on shore at Bursey saw and heard the explosion. 
An SOS was immediately telegraphed to Kirkwall, but the ship went down within 20 minutes. At least 737 lives were lost. There were only 12 survivors and Kitchener was not amongst them. News of Kitchener's death shocked the nation. This disaster had happened just days after the British fleet had been defeated at the Great Sea Battle of Jutland. Despair and grief filled the populace at this second tragedy. It has been likened to the hysteria surrounding John F. Kennedy's and Princess Diana's death in more recent times. The Arcadians raised over £700 to build the stone memorial, the equivalent of almost £30,000 at today's values, as a testament to how deeply the islanders felt the loss of the Hampshire, its crew and the national hero, Kitchener. Not surprisingly, this febrile atmosphere led to many rumour and conspiracy theories. Was this a revenge attack by the IRA for the putting down of the Easter Rebellion in Ireland? Had a German spy been on board the Hampshire? Had he orchestrated the attack? Was the Hampshire carrying a quantity of gold? Kitchener had survived? He had been seen living in a cave in Orkney. Why had information about U-boats in the area been ignored? Two Admiralty inquiries into the sinking concluded that the Hampshire had hit a mine, probably laid days earlier by the German U-boat U-75. In a bizarre event ten years after the sinking, the journalist and fantasist Frank Power claimed that a coffin containing Kitchener's body had been washed ashore in Norway. Power arrived in London accompanying the coffin, expecting the British state to give Kitchener the military funeral he deserved. Unfortunately for Power, the Westminster coroner insisted on an inquest into Kitchener's death. The coffin was opened to enable the autopsy, only to find a layer of tar and no body. Power claimed that Kitchener's body must have been stolen. A plaque on the memorial reads, This tower was raised by the people of Orkney in memory of Field Marshal Earl Kitchener of Khartoum. On that corner of his country, which he had served so faithfully nearest to the place where he died on duty. He and his staff perished along with the officers and nearly all the men of HMS Hampshire on 5th June 1916. Today, the wreck of the Hampshire lies upside down on the seabed, protected as a designated war grave.